I need you to clap. I'm clapping as hard as I can. I don't want to clap too... <laughs> Happy? Happy? Yep. Should we do an introduction? Welcome back, kids. Welcome back to the next episode. Welcome back, kids, to Terry Potter Chapter 1, Part B. <laughs> part B. Because apparently it takes us a long time to read through one chapter. Oh, we're entertaining. Anyway, Mr. Dursley might have been drifting into an uneasy sleep, but the cat on the wall outside was showing no sign of sleepiness. They're not even in the scene. Why are they there? Take them He's away. drifting away into his sleep. Yeah, but now it's on the cat. It's only the cat. Just get the cat. It was sitting as still as a statue, its eyes fixed unblinkingly on the far corner of Privet Drive. That's an owl. I don't know. I lost the cat. <laughs> Find the cat. What did, what did I do with the cat? I don't remember. You had it last. Look, the cat's lost. I don't care. We need the cat. Dude, I'm serious. I'm not I'm going, going on without the cat. I don't no, it's know in my if contract. we have the cat. I'm looking. Nope. I'm not going on without the cat. I won't do it. <laughs> it's it's in my contract. I won't do it without the cat. <laughs> I don't think we... What about something cat-like? No, it has to be the cat. It's over on the right somewhere. Find it on the right. That's no, a dragon. Not, no, that's... No, I'm not... I, it's, dude, I lost the cat. The cat's find gone. Find the cat. <laughs> no, like it's like off the screen. <sighs> Use the owl, not the dragon. <laughs> All right. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to the cat. I lost it at the end of the last scene. It didn't so much as quiver when a car door slammed on the next street. Nor when two owls swooped overhead. I'd love to see oh, how this works out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't worry. I got this. That's a, that's a wrap. <laughs> okay, it's, you know it's fine. We're working on a budget. It's okay. They told me, they told me it would be like this when I signed up. It's fine. It's fine. In fact, it was nearly midnight before the cat moved at all. A man appeared on the corner the cat had been watching. Appeared so, so suddenly and silently you'd have thought he'd just popped out of the ground. The cat's tail twitched and its eyes narrowed. Meow. Where's the man that popped out of the ground? Oh. Yeah, the, oh. It's not a pop. Oh. <laughs> that was really <laughs> slow. I was expecting something All right, hold on. I can do it better. It's still a bit slow. Okay, well, give me a break. I can only do so many effects. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing like this man had ever been seen on Privet Drive. He was tall and thin and very old. You found the cat. Great. Well, it's not the same cat. It's a replacement cat, but, you yes, know. I think this is the actual cat we were supposed to use. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Very old, judging by the silver in his hair and beard, which were both long enough to tuck into his belt. He was wearing large robes, a purple cloak that swept the ground, and high-heeled buckled boots, because, I mean, it's England. You're okay with that kind of thing. Guys can wear high heels in England? Oh, they can, we can wear high heels wherever you want, darling. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> His blue eyes were light, bright, and sparkling behind half-moon spectacles. And his nose was very... <laughs> <laughs> his nose was very long and crooked. As though it had been broken at least twice. Only twice? Pfft, what a weakling. Wait, what type of hat does he have? Does he have a steeple hat like a normal wizard? No, he's got his hat. Are you sure he yeah, doesn't no, have he doesn't a have, steeple hat? He doesn't have a steeple That's a witch hat. It's a steeple hat. It's a witch hat. Yeah, but they're called steeple hats. It's a witch hat. Okay, continue. This man's name was Albus Dumbledore, and he was totally not gay. My name's Albus Dumbledore. He didn't and say I'm... anything. Why, 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 can't he, why can't he be gay? Well, no, he, he's... It's... Isn't he gay in the books? He is, but we're making some adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not going to be a popular adjustment to make a gay wizard ungay. Well, no, he's not gay yet. We're going to build that. It's a storyline. It's fine. Go oh, okay. Well, Cur he's currently straight. Well, no, we maybe. don't know. We don't know. Oh. It's it's a mystery. It's well, then why did you say anything about his sexuality if we don't know anything about because it? Because we need to keep them guessing. Is he dating the cat? Albus Dumbledore didn't seem to realize that he had just arrived in a street where everything from his name to his boots was unwelcome. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty bad. I want to get rid of his boots. He was busy rummaging in his cloak looking for something. But he did seem to realize that he was being watched, because he looked up suddenly at the cat, which was still staring at him from the other side, at the end of the street, 
For some reason, the sight of the cat seemed to amuse him. He chuckled and muttered, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know where my life... I should have known. Very good, Dumbledore. He found that he was looking for oh, oh, oh. in his inside pocket. Oh, oh, oh. It seemed to be a silver cigarette lighter. He, oh, oh. he flicked it open, held it up in the air, and clicked it. The nearest stri- street lamp went out with a pop. Don't stop. No, that's no. What? no. Why? Because <laughs> he's holding uh, his lighter up to the sky. Why do you go? Why do you automatically go to "Don't Stop Believing"? I just wanted to sing that song. There's a lot of songs Let's... that you lift your lighter up to. I know, and I went with "Don't Stop Believing." Well, yeah, but when was book? When did this book come out? The nineties. It would have been "Don't Stop Believing." So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. He clicked it again. The next street lamp flickered into darkness. Twelve times he clicked the putter out. (laughs) That's a a stupid name. Until the only lights left on the whole street were two tiny... Putter outer? It's the putter outer. Sounds like Potter. No, it's... Shit. It does. (laughs) You put the Potter out. God damn it. (laughs) Were two tiny pinpricks in the distance, which were the eyes of the cat watching him. If anyone looked out of their window now, even beady-eyed Mrs. Dursley, that's not a very nice thing to say, they wouldn't be able to see anything that was happening down the pavement. Why is she... Th- no, it was just she, a metaphor. Even, yeah, but uh, I mean, I was showing the metaphor. Down on the pavement, Dumbledore slipped the putter out of back inside his cloak and set off down the street towards number four, Privet Drive, where he sat down on the wall next to the cat. He didn't look at it, but after a moment... He spit. Why is Harry? That's his paws. That's his putter out here. He put it back in his pocket, though. Oh, all right. If you want me to put Harry Potter back in Dumbledore's pants, put him on. The I will scene. do it. Take Harry out of the scene. I'm gonna do it a little Take off. Take Harry though. out of the scene. And this is your line. <laughs> We're waiting oh, for you. So sorry. Fred, Susie, you here, Professor McGonagall. 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 Oh, shit, we lost her. He Uh, turned to smile at the tabby, but it had gone. Instead, he was smiling at a rather severe-looking woman who was wearing square glasses, exactly the shape of the markings the cat had around its eyes. She, too, was wearing a cloak, an emerald one. Her black hair was drawn into a tight bun. She looked distinctly ruffled. I can't find Mrs. Gonagall. You can what find happened? You, know, you had her. You had her. I know, but there's a thought. Of ca- oh, I found her. Found her. Okay, okay, switch the cat. Do a magical effect. Oh. Do, 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 do. Poof. How did you know it was me? She asked. My dear professor, I've never seen a cat with a booty like that. That's not right. I've never seen a cat who likes to move like that. Nope. I've never seen a cat sit so stiffly like go. that. No, there's no like that. I've never seen a cat so sit, sit so, so stiff. stiffly. You'd you'd be stiff too if you'd been sitting on a brick wall all day, said Professor McGonagall. All day, damn girl, when you could have been celebrating. I must have passed a dozen feasts and parties on my way here, yo. Professor McGonagall sniffed angrily, and I empathize with her. How do you sniff angrily? Is that like a... <laughs> no, it's like this. It's like... Sharp. That's not, that's not angrily. That's like snooty. No, it's... it's like angry. uh, an angry sniff has got to be like a snort. No, it's not. It's not a snort. Bring up a clip from the movie. <laughs> there we go. What, did she sniff angry in the movie? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yes. Everyone's celebrating tonight, all right. I don't. Her voice is changing. That's fine. She said impatiently. You'd think there'd be a bit more care they'd be a bit more careful, but no, even the muggles haven't noticed anything's going on. It was on their news, she jerked her head back at the Dursley's dark living room window. I heard it. Flocks of owls shooting stars. Well, they're not completely stupid. They were bound to notice something. Shooting stars down in Kent. I bet that was Did Deadless Dig Deadless Diggle. He like, never had much sense. Can? I don't even know who that is. Deadless Diggle? I don't know. Anyway, you're your line. You, you, you can't blame him. Said Dumbledore, gen- said Dumbledore gently. Oh, sorry. You, you can't blame them. Said Dumbledore gently. We've had precious little to celebrate for over 11 years. I know that. 
said Professor McGonagall irritably. But that's no reason to... That's... Well, shit. But that's no reason to lose our heads. People are being downright careless out on the streets in broad daylight, not even dressed in muggle clothes, swapping rooms. No, don't use that word. They're not cool. She threw a sharp sideways glance at Dumbledore and slapped him across the face. <laughs> Thank you very much. As though hoping he was going to tell her something. But he didn't, so she went on. A fine thing it would be. On the very day, you know who seems to have disappeared at last. The muggles found out all about you us. You mean Voldemort? If I, you know who. Yeah, his name's Voldemort. You know who. Good old Baldy. You know I su- that mugger knew how to party. I suppose oh, he really. I suppose he really has gone, Dumbledore. Is Voldemort a muggle too? No, he's not a muggle. Well, I mean, he's dead, so he's no longer a wizard. Well, he's not a muggle, so he's though. A, he's a so dead, he's dead wizard. Dead he's, no, he's a dead wizard. No, you lose your wizard powers when you die. No, you don't. Can you cast spells as a dead wizard? Okay, Dumbledore me. kind of did. Oh. But we didn't get there yet, so... Okay, sorry. <sighs> anyway, it's your line. Oh. It certainly seems so. Said Dumbledore. We have to be thankful for... We have much to be thankful for. Would you care for a lemon drop, if you know what I mean? A what? A lemon drop. They're a kind of m- mugger sweet I'm muggle, rather fond no, of. M- muggle sweet. Yeah, mugger. Muggle. Yeah, mugger. Muggle. Mugger sweet. Muggle. Don't, that's my word. Don't use that word. <laughs> They're a kind of muggle sweet I'm rather fond of. No, thank you, said Mrs. Ted Professor McGonagall coldly <laughs> as though she... Didn't know, didn't think this was the moment for lemon drops. As I say, even if you know who has gone... Voldemort. You know who? <laughs> Voldemort, you know yeah. Who? Yeah. No, you know who? His, his name's Voldemort. Actually, it's not Voldemort. It's his cousin. You don't know his name. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't read these books yet. Anyway, it's your line. My dear... What was your name again? McGonagall? My dear McGonagall. No, it's your sister. Surely a sensible person like yourself can call him by his name. See, he knows what I'm talking about. All this you-know-who nonsense for 11 years. I've been trying to persuade people to call him by his proper name. It's Vody Poo. Professor McGonagall flinched, but Dumbledore, who was uns- unsticking two lemon drops, seemed not to notice. Wait, it all gets so confusing if we keep saying you know who. I've never seen any reason to be so fond of saying Voldipoo's name. I know you haven't, said Professor McGonagall, sounding half exasperated, half admiring. But you're different. Everyone knows you're the only one. You know who. All oh, right, Voldemort. That's a phrase. Voldipoo. V- Voldemort. But yeah, but I like to call him Voldipoo because he's my boo. It's your line. You flatter me, said Dumbledore calmly. Voldipoo had powers I will never have only until because, the final book. Only because you're too, well, noble to use them. It's lu- it's lucky it's dark. I haven't blushed so much since Madame Pomfrey sucked on my D, nope, if you know what no, I mean. No, no, no. Madame Pomfrey told me she liked my new earmuffs, there, if you know no, what I there's mean. No, no... I'm going to just <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. Professor McGonagall shot a sharp look at Dumbledore and said, The owls are nothing next to the rumours that are flying around. You Ooh. know that everyone's saying about why he's disappeared? About what finally stopped him? It seemed that Professor McGonagall had reached the point that she was most anxious to discuss. The real reason she had been waiting on a cold, hard wall all day. For neither as a cat or a woman had she fixed, had she, had she fixed Dumbledore with such a piercing stare as she did now. It was plain that whatever everyone was saying, she was not going to believe it until on the... What? Oh, I hit the wrong one. I'm going to look for a a lemon drop Uh, prop. I'll be right back. Until Dumbledore told her it was true. Dumbledore, however, was choosing another lemon drop and did not answer. Yeah, I'm trying to find that shit. Give me a second. What are they saying? She pressed on. Is, Is that last night, Voldemort turned up in Godric's Hollow and went to find the Potters. The rumor is that Lily James Potter are, are that they're dead. Dumbledore bow- bowed his head. Professor McGonagall gasped. Lily and James. Oh! I thought I was doing Mr. Professor McGonagall. Oh, sorry. <gasps> there you go. Lily and James. I can't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Oh, Halbus. 
Dumbledore reached out and patted her on the sho on the shoulder. I'm working on that. The lemon drop falls to the ground. Yeah, you like that? I'll read He's his lines. More such. Read yeah, hold on. I'm gonna get to his lines. I know, I know. He said heavily. Professor McGonagall's voice trembled as she went on. Let drop. <laughs> That's not all. They're saying he tried to kill the Potter's son, Harry. But he, he couldn't. He couldn't kill that little boy. No one knows why or how. But they're saying that when he couldn't kill Harry Potter, Voldemort's power somehow broke. And that's why he's gone. Dumbledore nodded glumly. These lemon drops are delicious. It's... It's true. It's true. Flattered Professor McGonagall. After all he's done, all the people he's killed... He couldn't kill a little boy. It's just astounding. Yo, are you sure you don't want a lemon drop? I don't want a lemon drop. I fall. I mean, this is cherry flavored lemon drop. That makes no I'm... sense. Look, it's still lemon Shut drop. Up, but... Let's get through the Sorry. story. Okay, continue. Of all the things to stop him, but how in the name of heaven did they believe in God? Uh, no, we believe in lemon drops. Now, here, I'm gonna put this in your mouth. And I'm going to pat it in there. There you go. How did Harry Swift eat my lemon drop? It's, it's your line. Oh. Uh. Well, you can only guess. Said Dumbledore. He actually waited for that one. Impressed. We may, we may never know, though. Professor McGonagall took out the lemon drop. Wait, I don't even get to tell her what my guess is? Nope, just take... Here, this is no, what I No, you don't get a guess. No, you, no, 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 you don't get, you just, don't get a guess. I get a guess. You don't so get a guess. Here's my thing. You don't, Here, hold on. Get off the stage. Get off the stage. So get there was Voldemort and Vol this Harry Potter and Voldemort, and Voldemort was like, yo, I expel a snake us, and a snake came out, and Harry Potter was like, mama. And then he summoned an orc. Can, can, can and get, as we all know, orcs are way stronger than can, snakes. Can we get a snitch, please? So, uh, no, we don't need no snitch. Can we get a snitch, so then, please? So then, no, we don't need a snitch. Can, can, so curtain, then curtains, the orc please. slapped Put the slapped curtain down. Snake, Someone. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, back up. Uh, but everything's still on the <laughs> stage. So anyway, then he slapped the snake. Then he slapped Voldemort. He died. Harry Potter died. And then Voldemort died. And I think that's uh, basically what happened. <laughs> Professor McGonagall pulled out a lace handkerchief and dabbed at the eyes beneath her spectacles. Dumbledore gave a great sniff. Hey, where's my lemon drops? Great sniff. There you go. Yeah, I'm trying to find my lemon as drops. He, Hold on. As he took a golden watch from his pocket and examined it. It was, very, it was a very old, odd watch. It had 12 hands, but no numbers. Instead, little planets were moving around the edge. I got a red watch. It must have made sense to Dumbledore, though, because he put it back in his pocket and said, Okay, technically this is still a gold watch. I just got it painted red so it would match my head. All you have to do is say a line. Oh. This moves way faster when you just say a yeah. line. I've come to bring Harry to his head No, no, school. no. What are you, where are you? Oh. Uh, Hagrid's late. I suppose it was he who told you I'd be here, by the way. Yes, said Professor McGonagall. And I don't suppose you're going to tell me why you're here, of all places. I only just goddamn told you a second ago. I came to bring <laughs> Harry to his aunt and Anki. They're the only family he has left now, you know. You don't mean... You can't mean the people that live here, cried Professor McGonagall, jumping to her feet and pointing at number four. Dumbledore, you can't. I've been watching them all day. You couldn't find two people who are less like us. And they've got this son... I saw him kicking his mother all the way up the street, screaming for sweets. Harry Potter, come and live here. Look, the next thing I'm about to say isn't going to make any sense to anyone. However, it's the best place for him. Said Dumbledore firmly. His aunt and uncle will be able to explain everything to him when he's older. I've written him them a letter. A letter? Uh, a letter. Uh, let's see. Repeated uh, Professor McGonagall faintly. This is, this is yeah. I, you see, these lemon drops are actually letters, sitting, too. Sitting back down on the wall. Really, Dumbledore, you think you can explain this all this in a letter? These people will never understand him. He'll be famous, a legend. I wouldn't be surprised if today was known as Harry Potter Day in the future. There'll be books written about Harry. Every child in the, our world will know his name. Yeah, they, exactly, said Dumbledore, looking very serious over the top of his half-moon glasses. It would, it would be enough to turn any boy's head. 
Famous before he can walk and talk. Famous for something he won't even remember. Kara. You s- Wait, is your name Kara? I don't know. Why does you have a capital on your A? I don't know. It's like, so how do I pronounce that? Is that because Kara? I... Kara! You see I... how much better off he'll be growing up away from all that until he's ready to take off? Yeah. Professor McGonagall opened her mouth, changed her mind, swallowed, and then said, Yes, yes, you're right, but of course... But how is the boy getting here, Dumbledore? She eyed his cloak suddenly as though she thought he might be holding Harry underneath it. Actually, funny enough, I no, was. No, you're not. No, remember? You, Hold on. No, let me show you, let me show you my happen. Harry Potter. It didn't happen. It's my, it's my, my Harry Potter what put the? around her. He has to, what does, hey, Harry, you're fucking huge. Why does he have different Whoa. costumes? Let me just put it. That's his dad, I believe. Oh, okay. All right, anyway. Yeah, uh, my boy Hagrid's bringing him. Do you think it is wise to trust Hagrid with something as important as this? I would trust Hagrid with my life, said Dumbledore, and that's a binding which contract. I, which I do, which, spoiler alert, did not work out for me. It's I can see the future. You can see the future? Yeah. Can you see the future? Yo, I'm not, I'm not saying his heart isn't in the right place. Oh, here's your line. My sorry. My bad. Of course. I was just, I, you, you were doing so well. I just thought you, oh, sorry. I thought you could do it better. I'm not saying his heart is in the right place, said Professor McGonagall grudgingly. But you can't pretend he's not careless. He does tend to... What was that? A low rumbling sound. I don't know why I'm suddenly Welsh, but okay. A low rumbling sound had broken the silence around them. It grew silent, steadily louder as they looked up and down the street for some sign of a headlight. It swelled to a roar. It swelled to a roar as they both looked up in the sky. At a huge motorcycle fell out of the air and landed on the road in front of them. If the motorcycle was huge, it was nothing compared to the man sitting astride it. He was almost twice as tall as a normal man, and at least five times as wide. So this Is guy, that true? Hold on. He, he was a he was See if a our chunky man. Are right. I'm not. Tw- I'm only fifty percent so bigger. Our perspectives are way he off. He is very fat. Five he's times the size of a that normal fat. man. Yeah, it's, it's five Mr. Dursleys. That's that's a lot. Anyway, he looked simply too big to be allowed, <laughs> and so wild. Long tangles of bushy black hair and beard hid most of his face. He had hands the size of trash can lids. Holy hell. <laughs> and his feet in the leather boots were like baby dolphins. <laughs> in his vast <laughs> muscular arms, he was holding a bundle of blankets. Hagrid! Yo, I read the next line. Hey, Grid! Said Dumbledore, sounding relieved. We'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> oh, man. That was, that was... Did you see that transition? McGonagall? What's your name? McGonagall? I don't care anymore. Yo, McGonagall, did you see that trans- transition? That's why they call me Wizard Numero Uno, bitch. And scene. 